So the water has finally receded back into the rivers and the offshoots, these creeks and marshes. And now we're going to photograph the aftermath. But we're gonna be doing it with a slightly altered perspective on the 4x5 with the 90 millimeter super angulon. So let's head out, get shooting. So we've got our first composition right now set up. It's gonna be F32 at a half second, which is going to hopefully give us a little motion blur from that water that's receding across this road. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go all the way back down and around because this is actually deeper than it looks and it's incredibly soft. Uh, so even just kind of driving up midway, my car is like kind of sinking into a lot of the mud. So I'm gonna have to go back up and around and then hopefully I can come back down without having to get into uh, some actual water. But um, there is still obviously a decent amount of water out here, but nowhere near as bad as it was the last week or so. Uh, I'm kind of happy with this image. I hope it turns out all right. Uh, going from the 135 to the 90 is a bit of a challenge just because it's a lot wider. And um, when you're sort of trying to compose and find focus with that, that focal length it's just everything is just razor sharp it's like you can't really tell the difference between five feet and seven feet um, or five feet and ten feet almost so um, you got to really be particular this loop helps a lot that's definitely a tip if you don't have a loop definitely buy one because uh, it'll help you find critical focus I've got my second composition set up and it may look slightly familiar to you. This road is where I photographed that was completely underwater. This is the spot that James was on, except on the opposite side. That river area where it connects is still under several feet of water, but this field no longer. So um, we've got the, the earth being kind of sucked away. We've got this really interesting look in the, in the soil in front of me. We've got these crops that are coming up Got the smoke coming out from this uh, this factory over the hill. Got this beautiful sunrise. So we're gonna take it at F32. Again, Mummy 400, kind of continuing with that contemporary black and white style of uh, documentary 4x5 photography, which I think really lends its hand to photographing natural disasters. <laughs> So about two days ago when the flood was 
sort of at its peak, or at least kind of getting a little bit lower than its peak, starting to recede a little bit. I was out in the town of Holyoke, which is just south of Easton, Northampton, which is where most of these floods were heavily impacted. Um, and I photographed the Million Dollar Dam, which was just, water was flowing over it quickly. The river was as high as I've, I've ever seen it. Um, and it was very, very dramatic. And it reminded me a lot of um, a lot of the history that I learned about it within Holyoke um, and how many floods have taken place there and, and the incredible damage that has taken place throughout that town over the last, you know, two centuries. Uh, it's very, very wild. And uh, it was just kind of crazy to see how high the water was and, and really how powerful water can be. So when I first get into documentary photography, or what I would classify my work, part of my work as documentary photography, one of the big inspirations for me was a Boston Herald photographer by the name of Leslie Jones. Uh, he was uh, a working photographer for the newspaper from the mid-1910s to about the mid-1950s, so a very, very large time frame. Uh, and he's put together a tremendous catalog of work. And uh, he photographed a lot of natural disasters from out here in Western Mass, a lot of floods, uh, and all the way up to the North Shore, South Shore in Boston, all those places, Cape and all that kind of stuff. So it's really an interesting body of work. And to look back through those images, <laughs> to look back through those images recently and to see his contemporary black and white, large format work, mostly on two by three and then in the later years, four by five, and seeing uh, how he was able to document really had a large impact on me when I first got into documentary photography and has taken on a new light now that uh, I've sort of tried to capture uh, and document some natural disasters that are currently taking place. We had obviously these crazy wildfire smokes that were causing tons of aerosols in the air and negative emissions that were making it incredibly hazy earlier this year. I photographed the oxbow during that. And now we got these floods. We had a tornado recently out here in Western Mass, touchdown, a very small one. But as we continue, and I don't want to get political, but as we continue to sort of deplete the planet of its natural resources and climate change becomes sort of the norm, we're gonna to start to see these crazy natural disasters starting to take uh, take shape more often. Uh, it's a really sad but true fact about what we're going to be seeing in the coming days, in the coming months, in coming years. Um, and I can't imagine that this will be the first flood or the last flood that I document. So um, just trying to do my part and document it as it happens. So I'm currently knee deep in uh, river water mixed with effluent. Not the smart, I'm not the smartest man in the world, but uh, I will go home and shower and clean all this off me. Um, but I, I did take this shot here. Um, it's sort of an interesting composition. We've got these really beautiful trees that are sort of creating the path for this road. 
and uh, even though you can't really see the road, you can still see where the road would be. And uh, it's very, very bright out that way. It's very, very dark underneath the shade here. So uh, kind of exposed for the mid-tones, F16 at one, double check, one fifteenth of a second, uh, which might blow my hi highlights a little bit, but it also won't make my shadows devoid of information. Um, so I think that should be okay. I can probably pull back some of those highlights and post, but I think ultimately a shot that I'm pretty happy with and uh, feels good to get the shot. Doesn't feel so good to stand in the water. So this was meant to be an aftermath video, but there's still a tremendous amount of flooding. And the further you go up that way, it begins to level off, but then it dips back down into some serious flooding. So the homes that are out there are still under several feet of water. In fact, if you do a Google Earth view, this area is prone to flooding. You can see the flooded fields. And that's sort of typical. The fields typically get flooded. Not often do you see the river come up as high as it has. This is a, uh, a, certainly a, an event that doesn't happen often. And it was, uh, it was an honor to, to shoot it. It's been a lot of fun to shoot it. I'm glad that you guys liked the video. I'm glad you guys liked the photos. Uh, and uh, ultimately, no one here has been severely negatively impacted in terms of you know loss of life. No one has passed away. No one has lost their homes. This is sort of what happens around this area. They flood. Um, up north in, in Vermont, people weren't as lucky. And uh, I feel for those people because it's, uh, it's really tragic what happened up in Vermont. But uh, like I said earlier, I don't want to get too political, but as we continue to deplete the earth of its natural resources and climate change isn't moving in a positive direction, these are the type of things that we're going to see more often, unfortunately. But uh, as a photographer, all you can really do is document it. And that's what we did. See you guys all in the next one. Bye.